Copic. Yeah, November 4th, two Lima Romeo Romeo Socatron airspace, route towards Brookman's Park. It's 2275 and 118 just for 825. Right, okay, November 4th, two Lima Romeo, remain outside Brookman's Park, squawk 2275, next we can see 118825. That's correct, sir. Brilliant speech you guys shortly, Thanks. thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Right, morning. It's really early in the morning. It's uh, the current time is uh, 5:55, uh, 4:55 UTC, and uh, got a bit of a long day ahead of us, uh, going all the way from Wicked to Helsinki, so over 1,000 miles in a day. Um, we got our first stop in Billund, so just zooming out on the map here. Billund, which is in Denmark, there, and uh, we're going to take a fuel stop. Then afterwards, we're going to go to uh, Helsinki. Uh, which is uh, crow flies about 585 miles. So uh, yeah, the weather as you can sort of see is pretty good around here. Um, it's sort of punch through the first layer, and uh, hopefully we're not going to get much icing conditions or much build up. And uh, I think once we start getting closer to the building, though, it's quite low cloud, a bit of rain, so uh, it'll definitely be an instrument approach on the way in. So uh, I've already loaded the flight plan. Have a look here. Uh, we just called London. They given us a clearance to uh, join a Brookman's Park. Uh, we're remaining outside controlled airspace two towards Brookman's Park. So walking two two seven five, and uh, let's also zoom out. We've got all our uh, waypoints here, which are going to take us all the way to the bottom to Billund, which is Echo Kilo Bravo India. And what I can do now is just put in the VNAV. Just for an initial guidance. Uh, so we've got airports and takeoff minimums, and it will say airport elevation 247 feet. Again, that looks pretty good. Uh, right, other things we can do. We won't need a weather radar just yet, but with the. If we go on to men. So, what have we been doing this morning? Too early, so we go on to a uh, weather data link and uh, then go on to menu, send a request, update that every 10 minutes, and then at least we can get some uh, satellite weather. Yeah, so what we're doing, sat at the hold, uh, everything's loaded, we've already got the clearance from London, and uh, basically just waiting for the engines to warm up so we can do our power check and get out of here. We filed for it on the hour, so airborne in a few minutes. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, we might be minutes too late, but uh, yeah. Hopefully there won't be much traffic ahead, so we can uh, get ahead of the game. Right, so the engines have warmed up, you can see on the page here, so ready for the power check. So clear all the round, alternate air is closed, parking brake is on, throttles are at idle, fuel pumps are not cross-feeding, and uh, sorry, transfer is not cross-feeding, the fuel pumps are off. Alright, so just doing the ECU swap. Which is all good there and holding the motor switches now. So we've got the fails, two fails on each side, load increases, RPM increases. So that's the second cycle. Waiting for it to idle. All the cautions decrease on the PFD. I can hold that off. So basically, the pre-departure checks. So uh, taxi light comes off, landing light comes on. All the engine panel looks normal. Peter, he can come on. We'll get the stall warm fail any second now. Fuel pumps one, fuel pumps two, both on. That's the stall hall fail. And approach flaps are in for departure. Out from short runway. Alternate air is closed. And emergency gear is stowed. Parking brake can come off. Throttles are idle. Cross feeds closed and guarded. Trim set for takeoff. And uh, the auxiliary fuel tanks are transferring. Full and free of all the controls. And yeah, we're ready for departure. About two minutes past the hour. Right. Brilliant. Let's get out of here. 
Council of Pills Fly Plan page so we know what's going on and we'll just zoom in a little bit on the map as well. Uh, it's a quiet morning on in the tower, so good look up the final approach track and on base as well for both sides, no one's seen. And November 4, Tealing Romeo entering and rolling runway 24 right turn on. Okay, so nice lined up with the one way there. Just holding on the brakes. All looks good inside. Right, increasing the throttles to full. Looking for 100%, which we've achieved. 2,300 on both. Fuel flow all looks normal. T's are piecing good. And take off. Quite a lot of right pedal. A few birds in the wrong way to clear. Which they're doing now. That speed looks good, T speed looks good, and road says. On the brakes, gear comes up, your damper comes on. Ninety knots, flaps can come up. Slight left turn for noise abatement. All looking good inside and out. Okay, I can just take the throttles back to ninety two percent there. Might want even for a continuous climb. I would just do a cruise climb at 100. What I'll do, put the uh, autopilots on just to give himself more capacity, so heading and flight level change with the autopilots. Looking at the top command bar, that's all seen and captured. Alright, just racing for the right turn for noise abatement, which I think we can just about do now. So, right on the heading bug. Aircraft follows, all looking good around. And about 4 Romeo to London, 18825, good day. Okay, against London on box one, landing light comes off, fuel pumps one, fuel pumps two come off, flaps up, everything else looks normal. And what we can do is just give us a direct to Bowman's Park, and if we hit now for the air shaft, the aircraft should capture that. Okay, approaching 2,300. London Control, good morning, November 4, 2 Libre Romeo, 2,300 feet, Brookman's Park. November 4, 2 Libre Romeo, thanks, Quark Island, basic service outside controlled airspace. I don't you have basic outside, November 4, 2 Libre Romeo. Slightly been of course back there, 75 percent. I suspect it'll give us a climb very shortly. And I can see the sun just on top of this layer of clouds. November 4, Tilling Romeo, thanks, as you identified, and uh, you cleared to join controlled airspace on track Brookman's Park in the climb to altitude 6,000 feet, the London QH 1013. Cleared to join controlled airspace on track Brookman's Park, uh, climbing out to 6,000 feet, 1013, November 4, Tilling Romeo. And Lee Romeo, you've got a departure from Luton to come out as well tonight, so, or this morning, so if you give me a best rate of climb, that would help me out. Okay, best rate, Port Tilling Romeo. Uh, best way to climb you want, best way to climb you can get. Uh, 91% on both sides. And with a flight level change, we're going all the way back to 90 knots. Uh, hopefully, 1500 feet, 1600 feet, that should uh, get us up going quite nicely. Oh, uh, there you go, so we're going to get shot in the face by a bit of sun. And this is pretty beautiful first week in the morning. Oh, uh, there you go, look at that. That's nice, that's what flying's about. That's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Uh, aircraft's all looking good inside. We're on track to Bookman's Park. 1013, we've set on both altimeters, and that's 3,600. Climb to 6,000 on the uh, out select. And I'm definitely going to need to get my sunglasses up. Wow, that's nice, really nice. November 4 to Lima Romeo, continue the climb, flight level 70, and you're to radar control service. 
Clive, flight level 70, radar control, November 40, Lima Romeo. Uh, 70, so we've gone from 1013 to standard bar, right? so uh, no change there. 70 on the select. So in the climb, we've got uh, full power on and um, or maximum continuous power and we're going to get 90 knots. So you have a look at the top of the display here, it says FOD, which is fuel at destination. And that's saying minus 7 gallons at the moment, so uh, what will happen is once we uh, once we level out and uh, reduce the power, that should go well up into uh, well up into a higher figure. So uh, yeah, London's uh, nine climb flight level two three zero. Climb flight level two three zero. Somewhere there on the right, underneath that cloud layer. Uh, we've got London Luton, which will be on the left, and uh, there's a whiz air that's uh, November four two Lima Romeo climb flight level one one zero. Right to your discretion now. One one zero copy November four two Romeo. Right, one, one, zero. Yeah, so fingers crossed we're a bit like we'll be on top of all this. Uh, uh, by the majority of the way, I think when we get to billings, uh, we will probably start entering the cloud at a higher level, which is not ideal because you start using um, start using your icing fluid and you have got a limited quantity in this as well. We've got really only enough for. Uh, Two and a half hours at sort of the normal setting, and we've got a little trip after this, which so I don't really want to start going into uh, using all of that too quickly. Yeah, so uh, I think sort of one of the main key uh, key points for today is just sort of trying to uh, find favourable wind. Uh, we've got enough fuel, but it's uh, it's as close as you know close-ish to the actual minimum required fuel, so I don't want to be uh, bucking about too much. And uh, also just doing our absolute best to sort of remain outside icing conditions. So uh, this flight shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's more the next leg, which might be the uh, which might be the issue. Uh, but we've always got the option November to. Number two, Lim Romeo, climb flight level one seven zero for the cruise, and you can route Brookman's Park direct Redfar. One seven zero for the cruise, Brookman's Park, then Redfar, November forty, Lim Romeo. Oh, we've got this part with Redfur, so remove that one, remove the other and remove a brain. There you go, put this part with Redfur, cool. That's what that looks like on the big map. Easy 2-3 Papa Delta left. Again, that's not too bad. Degrees. The other thing about this route, which isn't ideal, uh, this, uh, I think you see the danger of restricted areas. I think it's danger areas here, must be sort of military activity. So uh, today we've had to file to go around that, but I'm hoping once we get to sort of around the Amsterdam sort of skip all area, that we can ask for a direct and hopefully cut a corner, which will share for a bit of time. Because it's added a good sort of 15 minutes to the, uh, good 15 minutes to the flight then. Uh, so, passing 10, that one goes on. Oh. With Covid tests going everywhere, I've had enough stuff on my nose, so I don't feel this anymore. <laughs> Alright, so, two tubes go over the top. Tighten out the bottom. Pulling the oxygen. All secure with no leaks down there. And having a look at my little ball. So, I'm going to set him just a slightly higher up. Altitude, so let's call that 18 there, so slightly higher than our cruise, which is the best way around that you want it to get more oxygen. It's going to pinch my cannulas. There you go, all seems to be working correctly. I've got my little oximeter here, uh, which is basically a thing that you put over your finger and it can read the oxygen levels within your blood. So, what I'll do is I'll start using that as we go up just to make sure that uh, you know I'm actually within an acceptable level. We also start laughing for any apparent reason. Um, it's probably a good excuse to send as well. So all looking good aside, we're in a uh, sort of doing our best uh, rate of climb at the moment at uh, 90 knots. Uh, passing 11.7 up to flight level 170. The, uh, the good thing about the really cold temperatures, uh, don't think it's gospel, it's a bit of a rule of thumb, so you can't guarantee it all the time, but uh, if you, uh, if you uh, below sort of 10, minus 10 to minus 15 degrees Celsius, um, you don't really tend to pick up too much ice, because all the sources of water in the air tends to be ice crystals rather than actual moisture itself. So, um, 
sometimes actually going high can help out with icing, but like I say, you can't always guarantee it. You know, you always need to make sure you have an escape route, you know, below if you've got a limited uh, icing equipment. Especially London, if you've got no icing equipment uh, at all, just don't go for it. Five descending flight level, two five zero, speed three hundred knots. Virgin three six five, thanks. Speed's fine. Descend now, flight level one six zero. Flight level one six zero, Virgin three six five. So as you can see, looking at the PFD, we're approaching flight level 140 for uh, flight level 170, which is on here, and the out select is taken up there for flight level change, which is commanded the climb at uh, 90 knots. And uh, yeah, outside, that is pretty morning. beautiful. Got a feel about well time there, craft those winglets, it really sets it off, it's absolutely gorgeous. London's going to be down there somewhere. Your knots is fine, descend flight level 210. All looking good. And that's us going over Brooklyn's Park now. You can see the needle going around in circles, but we're 2.6 miles from it. That's uh, the DME. That the main reason for that is because we're actually 2.6 miles above it. Um, so you got sort of the slant error, uh, which comes into effect there. As you can see, the GPS is, uh, yeah, we just got straight over the top. Uh, it's approaching 100 feet to go, the air crash just starts to level, and when it starts to accelerate for the cruise, then off we go, bringing the, uh, bringing the power back. So all we're doing is just letting the aircraft accelerate. You can see the true, uh, the indicated airspeed is coming up to 125 knots. Has true airspeed is uh, over 160 at the moment. So when that gets to uh, around our uh, design cruise setting, it should be around uh, just above 170 knots. Has I'll bring the throttles back to 75% uh, for the cruise. There again, that's settling down quite nicely there. So coming back to 75% on each side. Virgin 365, descend flight level 80. 80, Virgin 365. Gulf Air 7, descend flight level 160. There you go, 75%. We've got a fuel flow of uh, 6 points. Uh, we're looking for about 6.6, 6.7 on each side. Yeah, which looks pretty good there. And uh, that gives us a TAS of 172 knots at fuel at destination at uh, 36. So, uh, our uh, planned flight was uh, it's about, I uh, just double check on the actual, uh, let's see, uh, wrong one. There you go, so our planned flight on 4 5 was uh, 3 hours 18 minutes, and uh, we took off at uh, 5.05. Having a look inside, so destination uh, on the hour. So uh, let's call it 8. So 55. Six, seven, eight. So two hours, fifty-five minutes. So uh, actually, basically, uh, the good thing about sort of planning in this aircraft, which is uh, yeah, sort of quite handy, is all the uh, figures tend to be done at a higher weight, max all at weight uh, for the cruise performance. So you actually tend to achieve if you're lighter than what we are, with just one on board, and they've got quite again, they try to put quite enough sense of gravity as well, just to sort of give us that initial uh, sort of uh, a better sort of cruise performance. Uh, you actually achieve best in the flight manual, so uh, even though I don't plan to use it, just in case, worst case scenario, you don't achieve it, uh, actually, um, it can work quite nicely in your favour. So we're getting to uh, Billund, actually, with loads of fuel, we're getting there with uh, 30, uh, well, let's call it 35 uh, gallons, which all makes sense. So what I'll do, I'll just make a quick note of that now, since uh, on shorter trips, I don't really tend to keep as much of a plug going. Uh, basically, um, you know, normally when you're sort of quite good for fuel, um, yeah, it's more important to sort of be, uh, be busy with uh, sort of the aircraft on the inside and focus on that. But when you've got a longer trip now, when we've got sort of two hours and 50 in the cruise, um, it's, uh, you know, it's a lot better every 30 minutes to do a quick fuel check just to make sure there's no surprises, there's no leaks or you're not burning too much fuel or uh, you know, sort of other related factors as well. So uh, basically all I'm going to do is keep a log, so uh, that's called that 20 past 5. So I'm just going to put top of climb, COC. That's 0520, and our fuel at the moment, so we've gone to the engine page, 70 uh, gallons, and we're expecting to be at Billund 
uh, with 37, right, which cross checks 37, 36 on the top. So that's going to be there, it's uh, 0757. Hello, descend flight level 160, report the indicated airspeed. Brilliant. Uh, so what I'm going to do, because we've got a long time to cruise, I'm just going to sort of chill out and uh, it's important to relax on these journeys and uh, as we uh, probably start to progress a little bit further towards Finland, I'll probably start looking at satellite weather first to make, you know, basically making sure that both our destination alternates are, uh, they're not facing bad weather and, uh, uh, you know, proceed quite happily and, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just going to chill out now, so uh, I'll speak to you guys uh, in an hour or two maybe. Cheers! Right, so a little bit of an update, a little bit further into the flight, we've got uh, a mega shortcut from uh, Amsterdam skip on radar, where uh, our old recent basically took us uh, going all the way sort of uh, east before we go north, uh, sort of over Germany and then north up to uh, Billund, but so uh, they've given us direct from Redford to uh, Loxa. Uh, which has knocked uh, actually quite a big chunk off the uh, routing itself. So we saved ourselves about 20 minutes there with a load of fuel as well. Uh, with some, so we built some fuel for the destination, which is uh, absolutely brilliant. So uh, just sort of sat here on the cruise, we're at flight level 170, indicating 136 knots, which gives us a true airspeed of 175. And uh, fuel, we're all looking good inside. Um, having a look at the engine page, we've got uh, a calculated 64 gallons remaining. and. Uh, it actually says at the bottom Delta of the page here, 890 uh, miles as well, so it just shows you the capability of this aircraft, what you can do. Uh, whether it's 75% power, we're burning uh, just over 13 gallons per side, it's uh, absolutely brilliant, seriously fuel efficient. So I just wanted to look through a... Um, a bit of a uh, plus about having satellite weather on board, it's a really good option. So you've got the weather data link here and what it does is it builds up a corridor all the way up to your uh, destination. So you get two things out of it, you get your weather at the destination if I select it here. And uh, selected waypoint 520 Zulu, uh, so that is, uh, it's due to be updated on the next cycle. 220 at 10, so expecting runway 27. The wind is variable, so uh, might get a few bumps with that. So 9 kilometers in rain, overcast at 5, temperature 9, 8, and then uh, QNH is 1000. So it gives us a good idea what our weather is going to be uh, when we're outside of uh, the uh, range for the actual ATIS itself. But there's actually something else really good about this. So if we're just going to zoom in a little bit here, you have a look on these. You've got the wind vectors, the wind arrows, and it's showing at the moment. We've got a bit of a crosswind of about 15 knots. Uh, so our wind components are 15 knots, which gives a bit of a crosswind in the tailwind, as you can sort of see by our true indicator there. But what you can do for further planning is if you go on more weather here, and then you've got wind. So if you go on next, uh, 180, so that's the wind that's uh, forecast at 180. So you can see we've got a tailwind component, very shortly turning into a headwind component, which is not ideal. So if you go on to previous, we can now start to scroll down. And actually, if you have a look at 120, we'll maintain our tailwind the whole way down. And 90, again, you get more of a tailwind as the wind sort of backs off a little bit. Uh, at about uh, 20 knots or so and 6,000. So uh, actually, it could be advantageous to uh, maybe have a look at a descent uh, as we sort of get maybe a beam skip on and uh, make the most of that. Yeah, the downside is uh, when we go below sort of 14,000 feet with the aircraft we could less be efficient with a lower TAS. But uh, what will happen is, you know, it's much rather to have a tailwind than a headwind. So uh, let's see how that one goes. So it just sort of shows that satellite weather uh, you know, it's valuable. You don't have to get it integrated into the system. I believe you can get uh, boxes now that you can sort of uh, link up to your iPad and you can sort of see ahead. But it just gives you that so much more awareness, so much more sort of further planning. And, you know, on trips, legs, if you are fuel critical, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, not many alternate options. It's just priceless. You know, it can help sort of save a bit of fuel. It can get you there more efficiently. And uh, it also gives you a bit of comfort as well because there's nothing worse than heading into somewhere with a, you know, with an hour or two of, uh, you know, a period of unknown. So, uh, yeah, pretty good, actually. So, uh, the view outside is absolutely awesome at the moment. You can see the sun is uh, well and duly risen now. You've got some sort of uh, cumulative clouds building over there, and I think that will probably be the story for much later on today. And looking all the way around over the North Sea, where I used to work, actually, as a helicopter pilot, 
Uh, yeah, it's just uh, absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. So, uh, time to our destination. Uh, we've got uh, one hour forty. So again, I'll probably just turn the cameras off for a bit and uh, sort of sit back, and relax. I've got my iPod in, so I've uh, got some tunes going, and uh, you know, just sort of keep a good uh, every thirty minutes or so, keep a good eye on what the aircraft's up to, what our fuel the destination is going to be, and uh, make further plans. So, uh, what I'll probably do is when I. Yeah, think about sort of having a look at what approach we're going to do. Uh, that's, it's going to more than likely be the ALS anyway. But uh, when it comes to sort of testing out, loading up, and uh, actually sort of briefing it, I'll turn the cameras back on then. So, uh, yeah, see you in a bit. Right, uh, so you're joining me in the cruise. Uh, we've now, uh, rather than going direct to uh, Denmark, we've uh, entered Germany. Uh, fortunately, that sneaky little reboot that we got earlier. A quick look at four flights. Uh, we were going to go. You can see our breadcrumbs here. We started to head off in the northeastern direction, direct to uh, one of the points of the airport, which would have kept, you know, sort of kept us clear of Germany and uh, would have been quite nice. But there's a load of. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see there's lots of sort of military training areas around there, which uh, I think the military, you know, they weren't particularly happy with uh, uh, small aircraft transiting. So uh, we've got a right turn. Uh, to uh, do back and then it's uh, back onto our original flight plan, so we're going a long way around. Yeah, so uh, looking out the window, I mean, you can sort of see there's actually uh, a fair sort of build of the weather off to the east. You can certainly see it's got some corrective uh, activity. It looks a little better off the north, eventually, the direction that we'll be going, but you can certainly see on the weather radar that. Um, uh, you know, the big sorts of red patches, you know, something I think we definitely want to uh, go around to avoid. Uh, looks like we're going to turn uh, short of it anyway, which would always be a bit of a bonus. So, uh, looking at getting into uh, Billund, uh, the satellite weather is still sort of showing the same picture as when I last left you. Uh, so, we've got a yellow arrow here, so it's uh, marginal. So, uh, having a look at that, it's uh, also, uh, also met our. Southwesterly winds, uh, 170, 270, uh, varying, uh, all the nines, rain, overcast at 500 feet, uh, tops unknown, and uh, temperature 9, G.8, QNH 999 with recent rain. So it's, it's sort of seeing a bit patchy up and down. And uh, also having a look at our alternates, uh, Echo Kilo, Romeo Kilo, uh, that's uh, overcast at 8 at the moment, so uh, it still sort of maintains them in the uh, alternate screen, but uh, having a look around it, the other airport uh, the other airports seem to be scattered at 11 and broken at 15, so it seems to be sort of very much blowing through. But you can see there's definitely some precipitation and we'll uh, have to be uh, punching through at this bit. And uh, again, you know, so we'll want to look after the airframe without uh, pulling it through anything too rough and uh, you know, just making sure that we don't use up all our icing fluid. So uh, looking at the... Uh, uh, we've got to show full screen. Approaches at Billund, uh, it's going to be runway 27, uh, we can't do the count 2 or 3, so it's either going to be the RLS uh, Zulu or Yankee, or the RMP for runway 27, so let's go for the RLS, so we've got the RLS Zulu here, click on the plates, and uh, yeah, okay, that all looks pretty much sensible to put on the big screen, so what I'll do is again, I like last time I'll set it up on the uh, Garmin 1000, and uh, so we'll switch through a uh, quick approach brief. So having a look here, going on to procedure, select approach, it's the RLS uh, Zulu runway 27 at Billund. Uh, right, I suspect what we might do, uh, I'm just going to put uh, Yubina in here, just as an initial point. I suspect we'll end up direct to uh, Loxa anyway, but uh, we'll see what happens. Minimums for the RLS is a bar in the Having a look at the plates, 444, four, which is 200 feet to the threshold level, which is around that to 450. And uh, that's a load that approach. Uh, not proof of GPS, GPS monitoring only, that's fine. So that all looks pretty good. And uh, we'll just sort of scroll down, having a look at the big picture here. So uh, we've got the destination, and uh, then we've got the approach in there as well. It's just got a cross on the VNAV here saying that we won't be able to achieve it. Uh, so what I could do is actually put um, I should just change the VNAV and locks up. Of course we'll change it later on anyway. Just to 3000. And if we get, uh, get my pointer back on the screen. Yeah, so that would put us in a good place anyway to be at those, uh, those uh, waypoints. So those beeps you might be able to hear in the background, that's the uh, satellite weather just also doing its refresh. 
Yeah, so uh, having a quick look at the approach then. So approach, bit of an approach briefing. Uh, going from the top to the bottom, it's Echo Golf Rob in the uh, Billund Airport. Uh, the RLS Sulu will be doing long runway 27. Uh, the ATIS is 118.75, which we've got uh, tuned up on box two. And uh, I've also got the uh, ground handling frequency, which is 131.9 on the uh, flip-flop box two, and we'll continue the main frequencies on box one. So a bit of the approach, I won't put it in yet because I suspect we'll speak to uh, someone else in between. That'll be 127575 in the tower on 119.0, uh, so we'll change them as appropriate as we get along. The localizer, 110.7, so we've got that times two here. Final approach course, which we'll check um, on, uh, which we'll check uh, uh, on final, is uh, 264 degrees, and uh, the RLS, as we talked about, the decision altitude is uh, 444 feet, so we've got 450, which is 200 feet above airfield uh, elevation. So with the climate in between, it's also 4 and 500 feet, so we should have a fairly good chance of actually getting in. Uh, right, so continuing on with the plates. So the missed approach, uh, so it is uh, an IFR day. We do go around, we're more than likely we'll have to do the missed approach. So uh, the IFR missed approach, so climb on 264 to 2,000 feet, contact ATC. And it's confirmed the procedure as well, which is turned back to uh, turn right to one of the waypoints. And then uh, Ulrich, climb to 2,000 feet and uh, join the hold. But uh, let's hope we don't have that. And uh, any sorts of special notes? Uh, Transition level or ATC, transition altitude 3,000 feet. So having a look at the actual uh, sort of place itself, so DME required, which we do have. Now first contact with Billund Approach, select type of aircraft, which we will do. And uh, having a look at the place, so 264, we expect, if we're going via Loxar, it's uh, 3,000 feet, so uh, and same with Gabino as well. So uh, we want, can't be below 3,000 feet for that. After Loxar, we'll descend to uh, 2,000 feet and then uh, continue for the final approach fix there onwards. Uh, MSAs for the area, it's, uh, it is uh, <laughs> it's Denmark, so it's always going to be quite low. Fort Lima, Romeo, turn left to 050. Left heading 050, November, Fort Lima, Romeo. Yay, he's uh, putting us in the right direction. Uh, left at 050 on the heading. And heading is on the top command bar. And the weather in that direction, looking pretty good. So, come back on to the approach briefing. Um, yeah, so the MSAs we talked about, sort of, uh, well, sort of whereabouts we've uh, talked about as well. Going on to the uh, sort of the uh, horizontal view of it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, blocks are 3,000 feet, so it's at 2,000. And then we'll continue with a 3 degree glide all the way down to the uh, missed approach at uh, 444 feet. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, it is an IFR day, it's an airport I'm not familiar with. Um, so I'm actually going to let the autopilot fly this approach, just so it gives me the spare capacity to sort of, you know, look at everything else, look at a big picture. Uh, the autopilot should cope with it fairly well, uh, but if it doesn't, of course, you know, I just sort of override it with either control wheel steering or just disengage it and manually fly it all together. But it's just using the right level of automation for something like this. You know, it's uh, you know, it's a bit of a long flight, a little bit of fatigue from an early start. You know, so I let the autopilot do the hard work, and then I can just sort of focus on what's going on. You know, apart from sort of uh, actual physical hand flying the aircraft itself. So, uh, with a ground speed, expect around 100 knots on the approach. We look at a uh, rate of descent of around 530 feet per minute. And no problem, uh, approach ground wise, it's RVR 550 meters uh, is required, and uh, we exceed that massively anyway. It's just literally a little bit of low cloud, so uh, we've got no issues there. And uh, that is basically everything out of the place. If the, uh, just a quick note, having a look at the uh, localizer, so the glide slow power, constant descent, final approach. So, if the glide slope actually failed on this approach, uh, what we could do is just switch to a localizer only approach and change our minimums to 730 feet. So it just gives you a bit of a plan B, you know, just something to think about. The odds of it happening, very much minimal, but uh, it, just sort of, it just sort of helps you with future planning, you know, for things to go wrong. If we do go around for this approach, realistically, we're diverting to... Uh, we are diverting. Uh, you know, there's no real source of doubt about it. So I've elected for Echo, uh, Echo Kilo, Romeo Kilo, and uh, yeah, take it all from there. Uh, cool. So uh, he's giving us a little bit of a shortcut, which is all quite nice. Uh, our top of descent in 38 minutes. So uh, that's the source of an approach brief. Get it out of the way, nice and uh, nice and early. Not too early that uh, you know plans change but not too late that you're rushing it either. And just, you know, you can sort of sit and think about it. You know, it's got a little sort of 35 minutes. Fort Lima, Romeo, proceed now direct to Red Zoo. Back to Red Zoo, November, Fort Lima, Romeo. 
So Director Ramsey has just given us direct enter, enter and nav. And that's a little left turn. So uh, let's go on to the uh, actual navigation map. Oh, there you go, that's a uh, cheeky corner cup. I like that. Yeah, so uh, yeah, don't do the uh, don't do the briefing too early because it will change. Don't do it too late because you'll be rushing in. You'll just be behind the aircraft. So now's probably a good sort of time to sort of think about that. And then yeah, you can sort of ponder on this in the back of your mind. And if anything else comes up that you haven't actually thought, you know, thought about, uh, you can uh, you know sort of uh, you know just get the plates out, bit of a briefing, or you can uh, sort of just reassess it. So uh, if nothing dramatic changes, I uh, will uh, probably speak to you guys in the uh, well, the next few minutes or so. Cheers. Cool, right, we're recording. So, uh, where are we? We are South Denmark. Uh, we haven't got too long to go, having a look at the screen uh, until, uh, like I said, uh, 41 miles, and we're expecting to be at the airport in the next 15 minutes. A uh, bit of a flight update. Uh, we're descending through 13.6 uh, down to flight level 70. And uh, having a look on the nose uh, at the weather radar, you can see there's quite a lot of precipitation around there. It's, it's in the ACES, it's in the TAF and the MESARS, so that's what we expect. We've just got to make sure that these areas here, they're not too, uh, they haven't got too much build-up, which could cause us uh, a few problems. Again, the other thing is obviously we've got to keep an eye on the uh, icing situation, which uh, at the moment we've got a speckle or two, but I think we should be okay for the time being. The outside air temperature is 14 degrees. So uh, yeah, we're, it's, uh, we're expecting radar vectors anyway for the RLS on uh, runway 27. So what I will do, if I can and I feel comfortable with the weather, I'll set, like I did on the other video, I'll set the uh, GoPro up on the spare screen on the MFD, but flip-flop the PFD onto it so you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at. If I think realistically that, you know, I, I need both screens, you know, for most orientation, I'll just keep it on the map and unfortunately we're just going to sort of grin and bear that one. But uh, yeah, it's only sort of a luxury, sort of letting you guys know. But uh, I need to get another camera mount anyway so we can get a better view of, uh, of this screen because that would be quite nice. Yeah, so uh, we're definitely into the cloud now. Uh, you can see it's all a little bit white outside. Uh, I've run the uh, anti-icing system through just to get the wings full of fluid. So uh, if we do start to uh, go into icing conditions, if we do need it, we can uh, have that readily available. And uh, looking inside, we've got 29 litres of fluid. Uh, fuel situation, we're doing pretty good. Uh, it's on the middle tank, so it's not going to be too accurate, but uh, it is going to be, uh, we're saying we've got about 38, and with the calculations that I've done on route, actually looks fairly reasonable. And uh, around the low 30s at the destination, looks like uh, it's going to be pretty sensible as well. Yeah, so uh, that's that really. So we'll continue in the descent. Like I said, we've got, uh, what have we got? Osman descent in 12 minutes, and. Uh, yeah, destination at uh, just on the hour, so it's 8 Zulu, 2 hours ahead, uh, 2 hours ahead here? Yeah, it is 2 hours ahead, isn't it? So 8, 9, 10, 10 local time. Yeah, so uh, I'll probably catch you guys if we get a little bit lower down. Right, so uh, still in a descent, we're passing flight level 70, clear to uh, descent back to flight level 50. Uh, still pretty yucky outside. Uh, keep on. Uh, this might give the anti ice system another turn on. Uh, the outside air temperature is minus uh, 3 degrees. So we are picking up a bit of ice, but hopefully by the time we get to by the thousand and a half feet, uh, we'll be out of that. And all we're going to do is we're starting to pick up a few bumps now, so I'm just going to start bringing the speed back. Just get it a little bit out of that yellow arc. We've got, uh, just having a look at the yellow, uh, at the weather radar, it is yellow on the front side, I mean it is uh, fairly moderate uh, precipitation. Let's uh, just need to make, keep a bit of an eye out to make sure we don't fly into uh, anything that's too heavy. There you go, I suspect the bumps will start very shortly. November Lima, Vermeer, descent to 3,000 feet, QNH, triple nine, and turn left heading 335. 3,000 feet, triple nine, and left heading 335, November, 40, Lima, Vermeer. Right, triple nine confirmed once, twice, it gives us uh, 5,000... Uh, what I'll do, I'll just did the vertical speed on, since I still wanted to uh, capture a... Uh, still wanted to capture uh, the uh, VNAV, which was to uh, Loxa. So that all cross checks quite nicely. Everything looks uh, fairly reasonable. Still minus two outside. Still got uh, our uh, anti ice system doing its job. 
almost looks like we're not going to pick up too much now, so I'm just going to turn it off and actually sort of see what it looks like. We have got the alternative out as well, just uh, uh, just have some requirement to uh, save potentially uh, icing up the uh, filters, uh, the engine air filters. Yeah, so as you can see, we come on the plate now. Uh, so uh, she's probably going to take us maybe up to 2,000 feet to Elrit, so I'm not entirely sure yet. Ah, there you go, you can see chunks of ice starting to melt now, which is pretty cool. What a yucky day. Yeah, so uh, what I can do is uh, go on procedure, then activate vectors to final, which we've got there. We've got lock, we needed to check that it was uh, 264, which we've got. So slightly since we are going to start getting into a bit of turbulence. Yeah, this is seriously wet now. Zero degrees. Right, we're not transferring fuel, so we do pre landing checks, so uh, I'd like to remain as they are for the time being. Fuel pumps one or two both go on. Alternate air remains, parking brake is off, and we're pressure, and we're not cross feeding. Skier, flaps, and dirt lights today. What we can do, because I completely forgot, as I was working on other things, is to take my oxygen off now, because I'm running it out of 3,000 feet. There you go, it's always nice to get out, you know. Yeah, it shows what happens when you're, uh, you know, when there's a bit of fewer distractions, you're working uh, you know, fairly hard. November Lima Romeo, turn left heading 300, descent to 2000 feet, radar vector, and clear by the Sula approach, runway 27. 300, descent 2000 feet, and clear by the approach, runway 27, November 40 Lima Romeo. Okay, so heading 300, and we're descending now down to 2000 feet, which we've just put an excessive rate of climb on just for the time being to make sure we're at. Uh, you know, nice and stable by the sort of final approach fix. Right, so that's that coming in, so approach. Yeah, cross going to turn left to capture that. That's just a glide. DME 8.4 miles, off the drops expected to be at 5.5. So for the missed approach, uh, we need a 2000, which we've got 2000 here as well. That's on the uh, altitude select. November Lima Romeo established. Hey, firm, look like established 6.4 now. Very good, sir. November Lima Romeo, contact Gilan Tower, 119 at decimal zero. 119 decimal zero, good day, November 40 Lima Romeo. Gilan Tower, good morning, November 40 Lima Romeo, look like established at uh, 6 mile. November 42 Lima Romeo, Pilon Tower, continue approach, number one. Continue, November 42 Lima Romeo. So that's coming up to about half scale there, so gear and flaps. Localizer, glide slope captured, descending. Alright, back into the cloud again. So minimums of 450, 500 above is 950. All looking good. Ground speed 100, expected rate to send 530, yields power doing about 550, so that's uh, also correct as well. So far, so good. As gears come down, we now got three green approach flap is on, and uh, I'll probably land with landing flap at the bottom. Which is what I can do. There you go, let's go display back up there so you guys can see it. I'm comfortable with the weather now. Right, so we're descending through 1300 feet, down to the minimum of 450. November 4 to Lima Romeo, wind 220 degrees, 4 knots, runway 27, clear to land. Clear to land 27, November 4 to Lima Romeo. Clear to land, landing light goes on. Right, 500 feet to go. looking 
good. On localizer, on glide. Vision with the lights. That's a 200 above. Gonna keep your spot in for the time being. And runway's positively in sight. That's a 100 above. Autopilot goes out and a landing flap can go on. Minimums, minimums. Okay, so it's still continuing. Three greens, flaps out. Well, it's going to be a million data for fuel in this. Quite a long roll on this runway. There you go, just dab the brakes, yep, they're working, and we can just roll this out. Landing goes off, taxi goes on, pito heat, and flaps come up with both fuel pumps off. Right. What I'll do is give it that display back up. We've got the chart here, so expected of AK, probably a Charlie or Barbara for the south side. November Lima Romeo, of AK left on Charlie for stand number one. Left on Charlie for stand number one, November 40 Lima Romeo. Let's turn that defrost off as well because I'm uh, absolutely boiling. Ugh. Yeah, so uh, no, that was quite fun at all, that's actually. Uh, enjoyed that one. There's always, um, you always have the sort of, you know, any... <laughs> when your hill sort of hears, hears sort of broken overcast at 4 to 6, you always have it in the back of your mind that you, you're going to get in. But you always have that doubt when you're going down the glide path, you know, sort of thinking, you know, when you're sort of, you know, 500 feet above and you're still in a pretty thick cloud. And you think, uh, you know, oh God, I'm going to make this. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that kind of good fun, actually. So uh, arrived here in Billen, this is uh, leg one of two on the trip. Going to get some uh, fuel and uh, take a pee and uh, probably get a coffee. Just have a look at the uh, the routes and weather for the uh, next leg to uh, Helsinki. We should be the bigger one. And uh, yeah, I think the weather there, I think it's probably a little bit more windy than here, but um, maybe a bit of rain as well. So uh, probably actually, to be fair, not too uh, dissimilar. But I'll have a quick look at that anyway. Yeah, so I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. And um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll speak to you on the next one. Cheers.